Hello and welcome to a video from FilmsByChris.com. That's Chris the K. I'm Chris the K. Today we're going to be looking at Android open source applications for speech to text. We're going to look at two options. I'm going to show you one that I played with in the past I wasn't that thrilled with and the one that I use now and I absolutely love. Let's check them out. In my life I try to stay with free and open source software as much as possible. Preferably free and open source, at least open source. My desktop, I'm pretty good about that. My phone, there's two things that I've been unable to replace with open source software, but one of them I recently have and I'm very happy. The two things are Google Maps, there's just no equivalent. I mean, I know there's OpenStreetMaps, but it just does not do navigation like Google Maps does. But the other one was voice to text, right? Voice to text works pretty well with the Google applications. Are there any free and open source options, or at least open source options? Well, one I learned about a few months ago that I played around with but wasn't too thrilled was, was Sayboard. So we're going to start looking at Sayboard, which is in the F-Droid repositories. You can install that. Once you install it and set it up to run, let's go ahead and just open up the web browser here. And I'm going to click here. And I have my keyboard here. I'm going to click on the microphone right here. And hopefully Sayboard will start up. And it's not recording, so I have to click ready here. And now I can say something like, hello, and how are you? And it seems to be working fairly well, at least for regular words. But, period, well, I guess that should be a comma. If I made a list of things, like item one, period, item two, period, item three, period, you notice it doesn't do any punctuation, which is rather annoying. Another issue is, if I get out of that, <laughs> get out of it, if I click back in here, it starts that up again instead of going back to my regular keyboard. There might be a way to fix that. I've also had issues where certain of this phone right here doesn't have the Google Voice to Text application on it. On a phone that has it, I couldn't figure out how to get the microphone on the keyboard to switch over to, to, to uh, Sayboard. So anytime I wanted to use it, I had to click on here and then click on Sayboard. And then I would still have the issues of having to click on the microphone again and that it doesn't do punctuation. Okay? And some of this may be me not doing things properly, but I feel like those are things that should work out of the box. Also, there's other language packages you can get. So if I was to go into settings on Sayboard, you can see here that there's different models that you can download. If I click this download, uh, so you can download different packages. There's only one for English here. I don't know, you, I'm sure you can go and download other ones that maybe have a better vocabulary and maybe punctuation. But this program works, but it's not great. Let me show you an option that I've been using for about a month now and I absolutely love. If you open up your browser and you just type in at your search, F-U-T-O, FUTO, I guess is how you say it. And there's different applications by FUTO. We're gonna look at the keyboard here. When we click on that and we click on download, you'll see options, it's in the Play Store. It's not in the F-Droid repositories, but if you click on this, you can add their repositories because F-Droid, there's F-Droid the repositories and F-Droid the application. You can add their repository to your F-Droid application. Uh, you can also use Obtainium, which I haven't played around with yet, but that sounds like a pretty cool application where you point it at uh, Git projects and it will check for you for updates so you can download directly from the source rather than uh, third-party repositories. For right now, for today, I'm going to do the standalone APK, which you can download, although you will have to do manual updates or check for updates manually. But once you download that, and do, 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 do. here it is. I've already downloaded it once, but we'll let it download again. 14 seconds here. If I click on this, is it going to open it? If you're wondering why I have 38 unused applications, that's just because I haven't turned this phone on in a couple of months. It's for making videos like this. So that's downloading. It seems to be kind of stuck there, but I've already downloaded it once. It's not very big. I can go into my file manager. And I can go to downloads. And I can click on the APK to install it. But of course, 
a better way would be to add it to your package manager, whatever package manager you use. I'm going to click continue and click install. Then we'll click open. It'll bring us into the application where it'll bring us through some setups that you have to do with every Android application because of, you know, permission stuff that I think is a little silly, but that's my view. Uh, we're going to click on this. We're going to enable the keyboard. Then we'll click back, switch input method. There we go. We'll choose Futo. This phone is just running slowly. I don't know why. And then we'll give it permissions while in use. Okay, that's all you have to do. There are some other things we're going to look at here in a moment, uh, but they do have a little area here where you can click uh, on to test out the keyboard. Now this is, what we just installed is not just voice to text, it's an actual keyboard, which I really like. It does have, uh, you know, your, your swipe typing, so you can swipe stuff like this, I'm trying to do this with a mouse on my computer, this, <laughs> there we go. But it has its own built-in voice to text. And if I was to say something, and then continue to say something, and then I'll say something else. The one thing, one thing, one of the few things I don't like about this application is it doesn't give you any preview text while you're speaking, but it is doing everything locally. It's not going out to the internet at all, so it's processing it all locally. And when I'm done talking, I can stop talking or click the microphone there to stop it. You will notice once it processes it that it has put periods and commas where there should be. I didn't even have to say period or comma. If you're coming from the Google standard voice to text, you know that you have to say punctuation. You have to say question mark. You have to say comma. You have to say period. You don't have to with this application. It figures it out for you just, just how it's programmed, which is really, really awesome. Takes a little while to getting used to if you're used to saying period or comma. So for example, in the past, I would have to do this. This is a sentence, period. This is another sentence, period. What do you think, question mark? But of course, if I do that with this application, it wrote period, it wrote period, it wrote question mark. It still put the periods where they belong. It put commas where they belong. It put the question mark where it belonged. Um, but it's just, you got to retrain your brain. But this is so much better than having to say those punctuations. And especially for my wife, she, it took a little while getting used to it, especially since years ago, I wrote an application for our grocery lists where we speak. And I would say something like grocery, bananas, apples, peaches, pears. And you see that it put commas in between each item where before we would have to say bananas, comma, bananas, apples, bananas, or peaches, comma, or whatever. I would have to say, comma, did I say? We'd have to say bananas, comma, apples, comma, peaches, comma, pears, comma, or didn't need a comma at the end there. And that's how I would divide up, and then it would peach each of those in its own little list. So it's, it takes a little getting used to that it does the punctuation for you. Uh, but I think it's great. One thing my wife didn't like about it was that it puts the period at the end, which is very useful when you're sending a text or something, but sometimes you don't necessarily want a period at the end of what you're writing, so I guess that you can consider that a drawback. Now, by default, it has a very minimal uh, voice dictionary or model installed. Oh, hold on. Explore. Yes. So there's other models that it has installed this basic one, which is minimal, works well, and it's supposed to be fast. There's also a very big one that can be slow. I've installed on my regular phones uh, that I normally use, the English 74, and I think it works great. Uh, it's accurate, and I feel like it's pretty fast. Uh, so up to you what voice model you install. Right now, we're working with the most basic one, but here is a feature that I also find great that was very annoying that, as far as I know, I couldn't customize with the old Google voice to text. If I come back in here, and I click on here and I say, my wife is Jen and my daughter is Ember. It got Ember right. It's hit and miss with the Google thing. Sometimes it would say Ember, but lots of times it would put Amber. 
but it put gen with two n's. And why is that? By default, like I said, lots of times it would still write amber and it would write gen with a single n. But you can make your own personal dictionaries. And I put my daughter's name and my wife's name in there. And ever since then, it gets it right every time. Uh, so I should have erased that uh, so you could see it without. Let me go ahead and, and see if I click on this. Let me trash that. Trash that. I had uninstalled the application. I thought it would remove my personal dictionary, but it hadn't. So let's go ahead and do the test typing again now that I've removed those. And I'm going to say, my wife is Jen and my daughter is Ember. There you go. That's what I would get without my own personal dictionary. But my wife is Jen and my daughter is Ember. If I add them to the dictionary, it gets Jen with two N's. It gets Amber, or it gets Ember instead of Amber. And uh, you know, I could probably put in here, let's let's do another one. Let's go back in here and say, my name is Chris. Of course it writes it with a CH, right? Let's go ahead and go into personal dictionary again. You can do for all languages. I'm just gonna say English here. I'm gonna say Chris, whoops. And then I'm going to add another one. I'm gonna say Jen and I'll add another one, Ember. And my son's name is Connor, which sometimes is spelt with an E, he spells it with an O. So I'll just put in all our names and now I'll come back in here and I'll do test. My name is Chris. My wife is Jen. My children are Ember and Connor. There you go. It spelled all their names right. It got Chris with a K. It got Jen with two N's. It put Ember instead of Amber. And it did Connor with an O, which is also hit and miss with other voice to text. So this Futo voice uh, to text keyboard works great. The keyboard itself is also great. Like I said, it has swipe stuff. You can add your own prediction stuff. Uh, it has lots of features. Now, also realize this is a keyboard and voice to text in one. Let's say you just, you like a keyboard that you have. You don't wanna change your keyboard, but you want uh, to have a voice to text that's open source. Well, if we go back and we type in Futo again, instead of keyboard, you can also just install a voice application. Same thing, you download the APK, get it from the Google Play Store, or you can put it, uh, add their repositories to your F-Droid install or whatever package manager you use. And then that will just be a voice option. So, so you can use other keyboards and when you click on the voice option, it will open up this. I actually have both installed on my phone. I don't know if that was necessary. I wasn't sure if like certain things, like it doesn't have it here on this uh, version of Android. Well, maybe it would if I install it. Uh, but web browsers will sometimes have the, the microphone there to type for voice to type, voice to text. <laughs> uh, and when I have this installed, it defaults to that. And you'll see it looks different. Like here, it shows it down here, where when you're using the voice input application, it actually shows up as a window in the middle of your screen, just similar to what the Google one does. So again, I am so happy with this Futo. Again, uh, the only real drawback, and it only bothered me at first, and I don't even think about it now, is that there, again, when I'm talking, there's no preview of what's being typed. You just kind of have to trust that it's getting what you're saying, where other ones will show it typing and it's adjusting. So it doesn't show anything until you are done. See, works pretty good. Um, but yeah, there's lots of other features in the settings, but I would thought I'd bring these to your attention because I had, up until this, I had not found a voice to text option for Android that was open source that I really liked. The only thing I had really found was that say board and it worked, but not great. Maybe it could be tweaked to work better, but out of the box, this Futo application works great. They also have some other applications I haven't really played with. They have a, I guess, an image and video server application that's supposed to work better than Nextcloud. I'm deeply invested in Nextcloud. I have my Nextcloud server here. It's a little slow, but it works great. Supposedly their thing works a little bit faster. Uh, but again, it does everything locally too. It's not sending it to any servers for processing. It's doing it right on your phone. So you also might have uh, some uh, experiencing 
experiences that are different than mine. My phones are pretty cheap phones. I have not spent more than $100 on a phone in years. I tend to get a new phone every year for between $50 and $100 on Black Friday. Uh, so definitely not fast phones and they work pretty good. But I guess if you had like a very old slow phone, uh, you may have a performance issue compared to something like Google that's sending it off to the cloud and then retrieving it. But this is for your privacy, it's running locally. Uh, and we'll use your, your, your phone for processing your voice to text. Check it out. Great application. I am, I'm so happy with this. Now, if I could just replace uh, Google Maps, and uh, I mean, if you have suggestions for replacing Google Maps, but it's been a little while since I've tried, but there's OpenStreetMaps and applications that use OpenStreetMaps, and they're just horrible. They're fine for looking things up on a map, but for navigation, uh, they it, half, Anytime I put in an address someone's house, it brings me to their street, not to their house. They don't have a majority of the addresses, at least where I live, in their database. Uh, and so I can, with going with open source software, you know, go, okay, maybe lose a little bit of conveniency for, for certain things, but really most time open source applications I find are better, kind of like Futo, I'm liking so much better than the Google Voice, or the Google, I shouldn't say Google Voice, Google Voice is a phone thing, uh, the Google uh, speech to text. I like this Futo so much better than it, and most time I find open source applications better. Occasionally, I'll be like, okay, I don't need certain features to go with open source stuff, but I can't be messing when I'm driving and trying to figure out where I'm going. I can't be messing with my phone. I need accurate turn-by-turn -turn instructions, directions, and also uh, the fact that Google spies on everybody, the traffic information they give is also good. So I'm open to suggestions on replacements for Google Maps, but I've tried them and I, I have not been happy with them. But things change, just like this. I wasn't very happy with Sayboard, but now I've gotten rid of the Google speech to text and just use this Futo. Uh, and I, I also just like their keyboard as well. The only thing, the only thing I don't like about this keyboard that my last keyboard had, and I've looked through the settings and haven't found anything, I can click here and it brings up the number row. My old keyboard uh, would allow me, if I clicked it again, it would bring up a number pad. And anytime I like to type numbers, I like typing with a number pad. So yeah, that's, that's the only thing that still kind of bothers me. I wish I could click on this and bring up a number pad rather than a row of numbers. But other than that, it is a great, great application. If I wanted to go back to my old keyboard, I could and still use the Futo voice to text. Thanks for watching. Filmsbychris.com. That's Chris with a K. There's a link in the description. As always, I hope that you have a great day.